Get the scoop, stool collection operation and Optima packaging. This is a brief introduction to Tennessee's stool collection operation and optimum packaging procedures, or as we like to call it, SCOOP. It is intended as an introductory, refresher, or just-in-time training module for public health field workers. Samples of stool, also called feces, are routinely collected in medical care in order to test for a wide variety of intestinal illnesses, including bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Laboratory confirmation of the causative agent of illness is a key component of outbreak investigations. While collecting stool is a relatively straightforward task, care must be taken to ensure that a sample is collected correctly, packaged and held appropriately, and transported promptly in order to get it to the lab in condition to be tested. Following this orientation, you should be able to assist or instruct a patient regarding stool collection and know how to correctly package the specimen for transport or shipping. The Department of Health provides regional health offices with all the components needed for stool specimen collection and shipping. Regional health office or public health laboratory staff put the components together into kits and distribute them to county health departments. Stool kits are packaged in a plastic bag and consist of the external plastic bag, which can be used for discarding items after use, a pair of rubber gloves, an instruction sheet on how to collect the stool, available in both English and Spanish, a hat to place into the toilet to catch the stool, a stool container, a cardboard mailing tube, a secondary specimen tube, a small cotton ball or other absorbent material, a whirly pack or small plastic twist tie bag in which to place the specimen tube, and a copy of the lab requisition form. It's a good idea to keep five complete stool kits in stock at all times to improve outbreak response timing. Remember to check your kit's expiration dates regularly to ensure that they are ready to go when you need them. Some people recommend noting the stool container type and expiration date on the outside of each stool kit to facilitate monthly review. If you need any stool collection kits or need to replace any expired specimen containers in your kits, contact your regional communicable disease nurse or the state laboratory. In recent years, the state public health laboratory has begun using a new lab requisition form. The forms are a single sheet of letter sized paper and the electronic file can be downloaded and printed in office. Let's look at a few of the required demographic fields using the Tennessee lab requisition form as an example. Other states may use different forms but the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments, or CLIA, federal standards are applicable to all of them. Fields highlighted here in yellow, with the exception of County of Residence, are CLIA required information fields. That means that legally the laboratory cannot perform any testing without all of this information. The legally required information includes first name, last name, date of birth, gender, submitter, date of collection, specimen source, and test requested. Basically, you have to specify who the patient is, what you want the lab to look for, and where the lab is supposed to send the results. County of Residence is also required. It is not a CLIA required field, but it is very important for the state's surveillance system. Additionally, if the specimen is associated with an identified outbreak, the outbreak number should also be noted on the requisition form. With regard to tests requested, most types of foodborne illnesses or outbreaks will be captured under enteric for suspected bacterial illnesses or molecular for suspected norovirus cases. Regular enterics include Salmonella, Shigella, Shiga toxin producing E. coli, also called STEC, and Campylobacter. If you suspect something else, such as toxin producing organisms or other bacteria such as Yersinia or Vibrio, you will need to write that in the other category. If the stool specimen is collected as part of an outbreak investigation, the outbreak number should be included at the top of the requisition form. This information is included in the laboratory information system and allows the lab to search by outbreak number for all specimens submitted for a specific investigation. Most often during an illness investigation, we are looking for a bacterial or viral agent and the best sample for this purpose is a single stool specimen placed in a culture and sensitivity stool container, Parapac brand CNS or MCC brand Carrie Blair transport media. These are the orange top containers. The patient should fill the container to the fill line Per the specific instructions we'll go over in the next section and mix the stool with the media. At a minimum, the specimen container must be labeled with the patient's name, date of birth, and date of collection. In order to process stool, the lab must be able to associate the stool container with the requisition form. If the specimen container is not labeled with the patient's name, the lab will be forced to report the results as unsatisfactory, even if the virus, bacteria, or parasite is detected in the stool. Unused specimen containers can be stored at room temperature. 
Once inoculated with stool, they must be stored between 2 degrees and 30 degrees centigrade, and they can be shipped between 2 degrees and 30 degrees centigrade. They are stable at room temperature for up to 72 hours once inoculated. If you suspect a parasite as the cause of illness, the best sample to collect would be three different stool samples on three different days due to the intermittent shedding of parasites. These specimens should be collected in total fixed preservative, which is the only acceptable transport preservative for testing at Tennessee Department of Health Laboratory Services. These are the Blacktop MCC brand containers. Containers can be requested from the state or regional lab. You want the patient to add stool to fill to the fill line, no more, no less, and shake the container to mix the stool with the preservative. It is important to label the stool collection tube with the patient name, date of birth, and date of collection for parasitology testing because specimens should be collected on three successive days. These containers are both stored and shipped at room temperature. The State Public Health Lab will also accept whole stool, which is just unpreserved stool in a container, for norovirus and bacterial testing if received within four hours of collection. The lab will not accept whole stool for parasitology. Generally, whole stool is a specimen type associated with hospitals, but if it is the best you can do and you can ensure it will reach the lab within four hours, then it is acceptable. For the majority of outbreaks that you work, you will use the orange top stool container. Remember to check the expiration date located on the bottom of the tube to ensure the stool container is valid. Be sure to mark the container with the patient's name, date of birth, and the collection date so that the container can be matched to the information collected on the requisition form. Now that you have completed the requisition form and selected the right container, it's finally time to scoop the poop. It's a good idea to train the patient that's going to be collecting the stool by going through the instructions and the items in the kit. If requesting stool from a resident of a long-term care facility, for example, you would want to train the nurse or caregiver that will be assisting with stool collection. Orienting patients or staff to the collection procedures increases their comfort level and decreases the chances that you will have an inappropriately collected or packaged specimen. It's also a good idea to complete the requisition form as much as possible ahead of time and label the stool container with all relevant information. First, remove the contents of the stool collection kit and make sure all necessary items are included. When the patient feels able to give a specimen, they should place the hat into the toilet bowl with the edge on the rim of the toilet bowl above the water. Lower the toilet seat to sandwich the hat between the bowl and the seat. The stool can then be collected from the hat after the patient has a bowel movement. Next, unscrew the specimen container. The specimen container comes with a little spoon built into the lid. Use the spoon to scoop small amounts of stool from the hat in the toilet into the specimen container until the liquid level in the container reaches the fill line. Screw the lid back on the container and shake it gently to mix the stool with the media. Next, place the stool container into a whirly pack or small sealable plastic bag because, unfortunately, the specimen containers sometimes leak in transit. Place the included cotton on top of the container inside the whirly pack and spin the bag around to seal closed. The entire whirly bag is then placed inside the specimen tube and the lid screwed on. Wrap the completed requisition form around the specimen tube and place them into the cardboard mailing tube. Screw the lid on tightly and drop it into the mail just like that. If public health staff pick up the specimen, they should review the requisition form and stool container label for completeness. Also double check the stool container lid to ensure it's screwed on tightly before shipping. Legal requirements for shipping diagnostic samples call for each of the steps to be completed, including the addition of absorbent material, the use of inner and outer packaging, and the labeling and data collection demonstrated. Ensure your health department's return address is on the shipping label so that, even if no longer viable for testing, a specimen that cannot be delivered is not lost or unaccounted for. The most common reasons for sample rejection in the lab are no patient identifiers on the container and improperly closed containers that have allowed the contents to leak in transit. Be sure that you double check the containers and labels. The State Public Health Laboratory hours are 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Specimens may be delivered in person, via postal service, or by private parcel delivery. If you mail samples by the postal service, samples are picked up from the post office Monday through Saturday. Samples received on Saturday are stored appropriately and tested on the following business day. Alternate arrangements may be made for after-hours testing in unique circumstances, but prior approval must be obtained from the State Public Health Lab in consultation with the central office. If you send samples to the lab, they will be delivered directly to the lab Monday through Friday. 
After hours deliveries by private parcel delivery are handled the same as other after hours deliveries. The delivery person will be responsible for storing the specimens appropriately in the holding room, so it's a good idea to clearly mark handling instructions on the outside of the box. During working hours, specimens may be hand delivered to the sample receiving area. Call or email to coordinate delivery. State or regional lab personnel can meet you and review specimens to ensure everything is labeled appropriately. This allows any problems to be sorted out on the front end and will help expedite testing. After hours or on holidays, you will have to deliver samples to the front door. Security will not store the samples for you. However, they will escort you to a holding room where you can store the sample. The sample will be processed the following business day. For regional laboratory locations, hours are 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. local time, Monday through Friday. If you are hand delivering samples, you can go directly to the sample receiving area and drop them off. Samples sent via USPS are picked up Monday through Friday during working hours. FedEx and UPS shipments are accepted during working hours. After hours or holiday deliveries must be coordinated through and approved by the State Public Health Laboratory. It is a good idea to call ahead prior to delivery to ensure the sample will be received and testing can begin as soon as possible. Prior approval is required by the Epidemiology section for norovirus testing. Let's briefly review what we went over. The Department of Health provides regional health offices with all components needed for stool specimen collection and shipping. It's a good idea to keep five complete stool kits in stock at all times to improve outbreak response timing. Remember to check your kit's expiration dates regularly to ensure that they are ready to go when you need them. Complete a lab requisition for each specimen submitted, ensuring that all required fields are completed. Be sure to include the outbreak number if a specimen is collected as part of an outbreak investigation. Most types of foodborne illnesses or outbreaks will be captured under enteric for suspected bacterial illnesses or molecular for suspected norovirus cases. Most often during an investigation of illness, we are looking for a bacterial or viral agent. The best sample for this purpose is a single stool specimen in a culture and sensitivity stool container, Parapac brand CNS or MCC brand Carrie Blair transport media. These are the orange top containers. If you suspect a parasite as the cause of illness, collect three different stool samples on three different days using a black top total fix container. It's a good idea to train the patient or caregiver that's going to be collecting the stool by going through the instructions and the items in the kit. Complete as much of the requisition form as possible before providing to the patient and review before submission to make sure the patient or caregiver has filled out all information needed and has included their name, date of birth, and date of collection on the stool container. When ready to give a specimen, patients should place the hat into the toilet bowl and lower the toilet seat to sandwich the hat between the bowl and the seat. The stool can then be collected from the hat after the patient has a bowel movement. Using the spoon built into the lid of the specimen container, the patient should fill the container to the fill line, screw the cap back on, and shake it gently to mix the stool with the media. Put the stool container into a whirly pack and place the included cotton on top of the container inside the whirly pack. Spin the bag around to seal it closed. Place the entire whirly bag inside the specimen tube and screw the lid on. Wrap the completed requisition form around the specimen tube and place them into the cardboard mailing tube. Specimens may be delivered in person, via postal service, or by private parcel delivery such as FedEx or UPS. Call or email to coordinate delivery. This allows any problems to be sorted out on the front end and will help expedite testing. Prior approval is required by the epidemiology section for norovirus testing. Now that you have gotten the scoop on stool collection, you should be ready to collect the specimens you need to further your investigation.